Hello, welcome to Californiography. I am your history homie, Flew Hauser. And today we're in the Danish capital of America, Solvang, California. Every year, millions of people visit this city to admire the architecture, try some Danish pastries, and sip some wine in the shade of windmills. But how did we end up with our own little slice of Denmark right here in California? Well, that's what we're gonna find out today. The idea to establish a Danish community and build a folk school where Danish arts and customs could thrive was dreamt of by three Danes in Iowa. The Reverend J.M. Gregerson, Reverend B. Norton Toft, and Professor Peter P. Hornsild. They outlined their plan in 1910 at the Danish Church Convention, and their idea was approved and shortly after they incorporated the Danish American colony and set out to find a location to establish the community. In 1911, they found the ideal location with a good source of water farmland, and climate in the Santa Ynez Valley, and purchased nearly 9,000 acres of the old Rancho San Carlos de Juanata, adjacent to Mission Santa Ynez, for $338,000 from the Santa Barbara Land and Water Company. They advertised in all the Danish American newspapers to sell lots and entice Danes to move to the area. They called their new community Solvang, which means sunny field in Danish. And within a few months, the village had attracted more than a dozen Danish families and the first building, the Hotel Solvang, was built to house new arrivals while their homes were built. This was followed by the folk school building, which also served as a space for church services. This building still stands today as the Bit O Denmark restaurant. The small Danish village quickly grew in its first decade with the opening of the first general store, the first bank, creamery, butcher shop, and bakery, among other businesses. In 1914, Adderdag College was opened so that the folk school could grow and continue to provide classes in Danish arts and customs, as well as other curriculum. Adderdag became the hub of the community. In addition to serving as a folk school, it served as a community meeting hall, performing arts center, and even boarding house in the following decades, until it was demolished in the 1970s. In 1922, the first of Solvang's windmills was built by J.C. Wolf. However, unlike the ones that would come later, this was an actual working windmill used to pump water and grind grain. It's still standing today, and although not Danish in design, was definitely a precursor of the town's Danish style windmills. Architecturally speaking, Solvang looked like any other small town in the area in its early years. The first Danish style building was Bethania Lutheran Church, which was built in 1928 and styled after traditional rural churches in Denmark. By the 1930s, Solvang became the largest town in the valley and a commercial hub for the region. In 1936, on the 25th anniversary of Solvang's founding, the community decided to have a three-day celebration that included a parade, pageants, a barbecue, folk dancing, and singing. It was such a huge success that another celebration was put together the following year, and the tradition of Danish days was born. In 1939, the town was visited by Danish royalty, the first of three such visits by the Danish royal family. Unfortunately, by the 1940s, the town's economic growth had started to decline, as most jobs were available either in agriculture or retail prompting many of the young people to leave the area in search of job opportunities. Fortunately though, in 1947, an article was published in the Saturday Evening Post that would shape the future of the town. The article titled, Little Denmark, called Solvang the spotless Danish village that blooms like a rose in California's Santa Ynez Valley. The glowing write-up accompanied by photographs of residents in traditional Danish costumes soon enticed a steady stream of tourists. This led Solvang's business and civic leaders to decide that they didn't want their town to just be Danish, but also look Danish. They shifted the town's emphasis to tourism. New buildings were built in the Danish provincial style, old buildings were remodeled, and Danish style windmills were built around town. The streets were also renamed to give them Danish names. And the rest, as they say, is history. In the subsequent decades, more attractions and amenities were added for tourists, and the Danish themed festivities were expanded as well, turning Solvang into the Danish capital of America. Visit Solvang today, and it's not unusual to see throngs of visitors walking the streets, lining up to taste able skivers, or riding around town in a trolley. One spot that is often overlooked is the Elverhoi Museum, a true hidden gem a few blocks from downtown Solvang. It preserves and exhibits the history and Danish culture of the city. By visiting and learning the history of the city, you can truly appreciate how incredible it is that a place like Solvang not only exists, but continues to thrive.
Thank you for joining me on today's trip to Solvang to learn the history of this charming city. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. Until next time when we, because remember, it's you and me, continue to explore the history that could be found in this great big backyard of ours called California. I right, see you soon.